Yeah, good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Visible? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Shushi Moon, uh, Dr. Nikon, it was, uh, I mean, really a very nice presentation on Parkinson. Uh, I really enjoyed, I mean, it's a thoroughly, I mean, uh, uh, something which one can always take back and learn from there. And uh, since we are here today to celebrate the World Samyapati Day on the occasion of 266th birth of Master Elliman, so first of all, I would like to I mean, give my greetings to one and all, all the homeopathic lovers, all the homeopathic practitioners, all the homeopathic patients, and all the homeopathic critics also. Here I am, why I am saying the critics? Because they are the one who give us more energy to work. They are the one who give us the reason to improvise amongst ourselves. As Dr. Nikunj has said, that they will be able to hold the from the ear if you would do it rightly. So we need to have somebody to give us a, a thought process to increase increase ourselves, I mean, our, our knowledge, our practice, and as well as the best of homeopathy, which is already there, but it needs to reach to the masses, to the common man. Unfortunately, there was a time when homeopathy was considered to be the science or medicine only of the elite people because they could understand it. Now is the time when, I mean, uh, this, uh, uh, on this particular occasion, when we are, I mean, spreading our uh, wings all around the world, and especially the IFPH doing a very, very big and great role to bring them, I mean, uh, uh, at a global level, promotion of homeopathy. My, my congratulations to the entire team and Dr. Shaji Kulyat for that, because this is what this was something which was lacking, I mean, in our uh, fraternity to take it in a wide manner. And it's been continuous process for the last, I mean, so many days. It's been more than 226 days now. So it's been pretty, pretty good. So first of all, I mean, what I would like to say about this uh, uh, in the cases of, I mean, homeopathy role in neurological disorders. I've been dealing with a lot of neurological disorders, like I mean, as, uh, in my previous uh, time, I presented on motor neuron diseases, which is supposed to be one of the incurable conditions all around the world, but homeopathy has got an edge over it where it has been able to, I mean, provide uh, the uh, uh, slowness or even the stopping of the progression of the fast degeneration which the disease is having a main feature as, and uh, gradually improvising the I mean, other conditions also, and overall it has improvised its quality of life plus lifespan of the I mean, uh, patients. Here I'm going to talk about two cases of I mean, young children who had been having uh, other disease, uh, Uh, I'm going to share that. Yes. I'm, I'm just coming now uh, by going to share that particular case. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Just first have a look of the patient. Uh, the condition when... Uh, is the screen shared now? Yes. Yeah. I am correct. Coming. Yes. Is it visible now? Uh, yeah, yeah. We can see that video. That Please connect that audio also. Play with audio. Is, is the video working now? Yeah, yeah. Working. Okay, fine. Thanks. 
Yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. No, 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 sir. No, it's okay, sir. Some technical so issue. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just please, I mean, uh, observe her uh, legs, the young girl, unable to get up. I think you can increase little volume. You can. Sorry? You can increase the little volume about that video. Yeah. Oh, already handled. She, her father had to help her to come and just lift her leg. She is not in a position to wear her slippers also. Now this was after, I mean, uh, uh, she has started with homeopathic treatment. This... Now the same girl, she got a little, I mean, uh, uh, support of that stick. But there is a limp is there, which you can see visible. No, no, even on the scanning, she could come I and lift her leg. And finally, this is the beauty of homeopathy, where you can see the girl has been put back to the normalcy, absolutely cured after a few months of the treatment. Yes. Now she not only can I mean, uh, lift her leg, she can walk in a proper manner. She's been uh, ready to go to school and she could stand on one leg also. Excellent. Now, this is the, another case. I mean, I'll be discussing about the case uh, also. Is this visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now again, this uh, young boy, uh, I was called upon to see at uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and he was on ventilator. I mean, earlier you can see that the tracheostomy had been done, and all the four limbs they had no power at all. He had been on ventilator for nearly, I mean, uh, ten to twelve days, and the tracheostomy was done, and when there were no hopes left. That was the time they said, okay, let's we try homeopathy. And this was in the, I mean, year 2017, November when I was called upon, and I had to see this patient at All India Institute of Medical Sciences. This was in their uh, place. And once we started the treatment, after nearly two months, the patient had gained to such an extent that now he could walk with the walker. And he has been in a position to move around able to walk even without support in a matter of from walker also he could i mean within a few days after the using the walker he was in a position to walk 
without the support of either uh, either in the worker or by from any support from anybody else. So after, since the patient belongs to Bihar, I mean, uh, uh, he, he was brought back to my clinic after a couple of months, but not he was not in a position to squat, though he started walking, but he, the squatting was not possible for him to such a level that he could sit there as and when he wanted to. This had been a problem. You could see the, I mean, uh, he's been much better in walking, but uh, he was not in a position to squat. You could see that, I mean, there was a dressing wall still there on the tracheostomy, which, which was done before. It was healing. And at last, young boy is he's able to squat easily. Now it was in my other clinic when he came after a couple of I mean two months or so. And he is perfectly all right. And that's, I mean, uh, again, due to the homeopathy intervention, which they were not in the, I mean, initially used to think of that homeopathy could do anything for them. But that was the time after, I mean, facing this particular problem. And when this patient became all right, they have now they have become an ardent fan of homeopathy. Uh, now, before I mean, we go for further cases, I would just like to call upon uh, Dr. Sanket Gupta to say, I mean, uh, uh, about the efficacy of homeopathy, what has been seen in the case of COVID. Over to Dr. Sanket Gupta. Hello. So, uh, I think if ever there was a time to talk about the efficacy and talk about the efficiency of homeopathy and uh, to pump our chest in front of the world and let them know what homeopathy is really capable of is now. Uh, believe me, uh, the way uh, homeopathic medicines have uh, excelled in uh, bringing out people out of COVID very nicely and even taking care of the post-COVID cases it's fantastic. And that's what I would like to share upon. Uh, the, sorry. That's my presentation. Can everyone see this? Yeah. Sorry. How do I remove this? I can, I want to start the slideshow. So homeopathy for me and for everyone has proven to be a boon for this new world order. Uh, the, the new world order that has been uh, infested upon us through COVID. And uh, I would like to pay my tributes before starting to Dr. Hanneman, who believed that Heidel highest, highest ideal of cure is to restore through gentle and enduring uh, uh, way the health of the patients. 
and uh, that's why he coined the term homeopathy and came out with us and uh, we came out with it and so uh, covid as you we all we have all seen uh, there are mild cases moderate cases and uh, severe cases i found my uh, during my practice in the last year and uh, in the beginning of this year few of the medicines brinia alba ferum fos six x specifically gelsemium uh, nux vomica and rustox have given fantastic results i mean brinia uh, in the initial stages of the fever and even uh, the body aches has given tremendous results uh, i would also like to i mean uh, appeal to all my fellow doctors that make sure that the uh, your patients do not jump on to the bandwagon and take the you know calpols and paracetamols to break down the fever we must not do that our ferum fos and brinia and the indicated remedy is much more uh, potent potent of doing that and i've seen in a lot of cases that if we bring down fever uh, immediately if it is broken down immediately it has prolonged uh, the illness and it has even gone worse in certain cases so uh as we all as we all know fever is the first line of defense and does form antibodies so we must educate our patients uh, along with giving the medicines in the moderate cases where we see a lot of coughing uh, even initial stages of breathlessness and uh, you see a lot of uh, body ache as well and fever prolonging for a long long period of time medicines like arsenic album manganum acetum rumex lacessis again brinia and ammonium carb and ammonium mu when we see stuffy nose and uh, loss of smell and taste as well manganum i, I would like to uh, point out that has really given me a lot of wonderful results especially when the patient says that he coughs all day and sleeps well and peacefully at night manganum is the medicine and you will be uh, absolutely delighted to see the results it has given during covid times in severe cases when the oxygen level goes drastically down the pneumonia has set in the glass opacities are there uh, patient is coughing and breathless and uh, even in certain cases we have seen uh, heart has got involved and people with comorbidities also land up into trouble land up into icu at times these medicines have proven to be extremely extremely useful and uh, not just useful as i would say a blessing to a lot of my patients <clears throat> and for we all know as dr sankran suggested uh, well yes uh, it, it was suggested as a prophylactic but i would hear say that when the uh, oxygen levels have gone down uh, there is uh, hypoxia even severe hypoxia camphor has given a tremendous result i mean a tremendous boost to the uh, oximeter and patient gathers you know it he gathers some confidence by just seeing that yes his oxygen is improving so th that still keeps him up up a because once they reach the hospital we really do not have much of a chance to intervene and give them medicine and save their lives i am quite sure we can save we can save lives we can definitely save lives and uh, during this time and we can definitely not let them land into hospitals if we are staunch with our regime and they follow it well Aurelia racemosa was a wonderful remedy i tried in a case i mean i gave it in a case fantastic result uh, he was breathless the moment he would uh, lie down and he would say as if something is stuck here i can't lie down even for a second aurelia racemosa molding just saved that guy's life he was ready to go to the hospital he was the ox uh, oxygen cylinder had been uh, called in it had gone down to i would say uh, mid of 80s also but aurelia racemosa really saved him despite arsenic and carbovage was tried but aurelia was the one that saved him then kalika i've have uh, i've given in lot of post covid cases as well as cases where uh, 
symptomatic in, uh, improvement has been seen, but the, the uh, pneumonia is still not gone. So ending it with Kali Gaab has really helped. Kali being a uh, king remedy for lungs and for uh, uh, sorosyphilitic cases as well. Kali Gaab has given a lot of good results. And so has phosphorus. Uh, especially when we see the patient is unable to lie down on the left side, is worse there. Phosphorus gives tremendous results. Antim tart and antim ass I've used in cases where patients have been hospitalized. Antim ass, especially when uh, there was a case when the patient was almost uh, gone to the ventilator. He was, uh, the, the family was told. And somehow we got antim ass given to the uh, patient and we could save that patient. We could save that patient. Antim ass was given very frequently, antim ass 30, every few minutes. We requested the nurse to abide with us and she did cooperate very nicely and we could save that person. Also along with the auxiliary conventional treatment that was given, given there. And she was back home. She was a diabetic. She was a 78 year old patient. She was diabetic. She was back home and still fit and fine and completely healthy. And on post-COVID uh, treatment as well, she was only on homeopathy and responded very nicely. Pyrogen I have used in a few cases where there has been a systemic involvement, septicemia has set in, multi-organ failure, and even in high fever. You see, I, I had few cases where, uh, where the patient's fever had gone up to 104, 105, and would immediately drastically come down to 97 by dose of a dolo or a paracetamol. Checking the pulse, and the uh, type of fever, pyrogen was the medicine that could break this cycle and we could save again another patient from going to the hospital. And eventually that elderly woman could come out of the COVID and uh, responded very nicely. And she's still with us. Very important is again, post-COVID management, as we see a lot of pe people still complain, <clears throat> especially after taking steroids and... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of antibiotics during the COVID cases. They complain of prostration, a lot of weakness. Uh, even in certain cases, the cough is still not gone. The uh, exhaustion is still not gone. And Avena sativa and Alstonia mother tinctures were wonderful uh, to have it in your uh, kitty. And they gave great results. 5466 is a combination that I use that SBL made and that again takes care of all the uh, nutritional deficiencies that a patient goes through after an exhaustive viral fever like COVID. Fantastic results again. China, we all know, uh, has to be given when there is lack of vitality and the patient has lost a lot of vitality. Anika, I've chosen in a lot of cases where uh, uh, even after vaccination, I've used Anika, where uh, uh, Two or three of my cases, uh, they got uh, they got stroke. Uh, there was no history. Uh, the patient was never a hyper hypertensive. Yes, it is debatable that was it due to vaccine or not. We are debating on that. We all are discussing that every day. But yes, Anika was one medicine which took that patient completely out of stroke. He's absolutely okay. His BP is absolutely normal now. He was 180 by 120 when uh, he was taken to the hospital. A poor old man, 84-year-old guy. And he's completely fine now. And arsenic album, as you all know, again, for severe prostration and all. And even in post-COVID, as I mentioned, Kali Carbon Phosphorus, in post-COVID uh, cases also, even if the report is uh, negative, our work doesn't end there. Our work really doesn't end there. Patient is still not cured till the symptoms are there, till the uh, weakness is there, even the slightest of the symptom. Even if there is a loss of taste or loss of smell, as we see, it has prolonged a lot of cases, though they were mild. But even for two, three months, people have a lot of sense of smell and a lot of taste. So medicines there like uh, phosphorus, Kali Carb, and even ammonium mure, especially when there is loss of smell and taste have given brilliant results. And I'm sure uh, this was just a small effort to come out with certain medicines that I 
used during my practice in the last year or so and have given me beautiful results and i'm sure uh, all of you must be seeing a lot of cases and just I, i just appeal i just want to appeal and make sure that we all be very positive in this we should be very confident in treating covid and let all of them come to us all of them we can treat all of them absolutely i'm dead sure about this thank you so much and uh, thank you for your patient listening thank you so much for the opportunity thank you it was a common a nice presentation uh, now i would like because we have been talking about on world homeopathy day the efficacy of homeopathy and what homeopathy has been done for patients so we have got our based i mean mr amay sathe uh, please unmute mr amay sathe uh, yeah uh he would like to share his some I mean, uh, uh, personal experience with homeopathy uh, that what homeopathy has done for him and in his entire family because uh, the people I mean what doctors talk that they they been talking I mean, from the, the medical point of view but now we if we hear it from the patient's point of view that would be all the more better which will go to the people to understand it uh, in a much better manner yes sir mr amit sade please uh thank you very much uh, dr gupta for giving me the opportunity uh, i have been a journalist for last 20 years i run a website called sarkaritel.com and uh, diplomacyindia.com and i uh, uh, disseminate news of uh, you know common interest i have a column on uh, education as well as uh, uh, health for all and i i before i start with uh, uh, my observations i just wanted to share a small story uh, we were very small i think 9 or 10 years and my mother was very fond of you know having medicines you know and anything she uh, anything happens to her she used to go to the medicine shop and uh, she used to immediately take medicine so i just asked her one day you know uh, why you are so fond of you know having medicines so she says i don't want anything to happen to me so i ensure that anything even a small cough or a fever or anything that happens to me i just take the medicines immediately so i just asked uh, by curiosity i mean what kind of medicines you are taking so she said homeopathy and uh, i used to always see her uh, you know uh, whenever she used to get some time as a as a efficient homemaker she used to you know read a lot of books on homeopathy and um, in the later years uh, it, i observed that you know whenever we had some small issues i had a fever or a cough she used to treat us uh, using those medicines and uh, it was certainly a very uh, fascinating experience uh, i asked her one day that why you do all this we should go to a doctor the one thing which she told me that uh, the greatest advantage of uh, you know taking a homeopathy medicine is that there are no side effects which i think uh, the majority of the doctors on this panel will agree but uh, now i can understand say after 40 years that you know uh, the kind of service homeopathy has done for the humanity is is something uh, which is very terrific you know even today uh, you know i had a very good experience uh, i have been associated with uh, dr gupta for almost 20 years now and uh, whenever i had any issues uh, he was very forthcoming uh, we used to talk on phone also there were times in the covid times when uh, we couldn't travel or uh, we couldn't go to his clinic but uh, he was always available 24 hours for even some small issue when uh, everybody was frightened you know even a small cough or a small fever was like treated as uh, there's something which has happened to us or maybe we have catch covid so uh, i think uh, one more observation which i would like to share is that i think uh, in today's world when you know covid 19 has uh, uh, captured the whole uh, world with uh, you know a lot of fear i think use of homeopathy to treat covid uh, it needs to be promoted this is this is one of my observations i think which is not happening and uh, there is one more thing which uh, uh, just came to my mind that uh, could homeopathy be a alternative of uh, you know taking a vaccine to uh, basically uh, generate antibodies this is this is one of the questions which is like agitating me since uh, i heard this presentation from uh, 
Dr. Sanket Gupta, it was, it was something very brilliant. You know, I, I remember when I was small, I used to uh, uh, listen to all these medicines, Arnica, Calcaria, Foss. I, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it properly, but I often used to hear this uh, when my mother used to do all these small medicines to treat small, uh, uh, small problems. Uh, lastly, uh, I think uh, more efforts needs to be done uh, from in the world of homeopathy to you know treat this COVID-19 because this is becoming a major problem now. And uh, could this be an alternative to uh, you know taking vaccines? I think I should end here and uh, over to Dr. Ekhi Gupta. Doctor, I mean, uh, thank you, Mr. Amit Hade. It has been very nicely that you have come I and mean, brought in that you have been brought in I mean, up with the very right from your childhood. And today, 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 you have been talking about uh, the alternative of vaccination in the form of homeopathy. Yes, we are already working on that, and the entire world is looking forward to. But what we have been saying that I mean, homeopathic people like I mean, so far, uh, many of homeopaths who have been I mean, uh, in the category of uh, vaccinate to be vaccinated, they have not got themselves vaccinated because of this reason only. They 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 have their own I mean uh, uh, feelings that they, those so-called antibodies are being produced by I mean, homeopathic medicines, by the constitutional medicines, by giving your own immunity booster, which has worked I mean, uh, tremendously. Uh, here I would like to have another I mean, uh, 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 testimony of a particular patient of ours uh, who had got a very tremendous experience of I mean, uh, with homeopathy. Uh, I would like to bring him over there. Sure. Uh, uh, I really feel so bad about it that there have been uh, some glitches on that. But uh, today, in the, this in the morning, I, as uh, Dr. Shaji also knows, that we were having a uh, World Homeopathy Day celebration in India and by the CCRH. So where, where we had come in, uh, uh, the team had been the roadmap of homeopathy towards integration. So what I would like to I mean, uh, uh, just talk on that, that the paper presented I mean, by me uh, today, I'm just going to share with the, I mean, uh, so that we can have a quick uh, recapture. Like this is integra integration of medical systems beneficial in clinical care. This has been the order of the day. Even the WHO has also started saying it, that the, I mean, especially in the COVID period of time, that no, I mean, uh, allopathic medicine alone has not been enough to tackle all the cases. Even in China, they they took the help of their traditional medicines to treat and cure, I mean, uh, COVID. So here in uh, our country, arsenic album has been given at a, I mean, wide level as a preventive as well as curative. Also, as Dr. Sangeet Gupta has given a couple of medicines, but we. As, a, as on date, we do need our I mean, integration of uh, various medical systems for the benefit of the patients. As, as I call, like, I mean, uh, this thing, collaboration between health professionals to provide complete treatment to patients and improve overall well-being is called integrated healthcare. It is an approach characterized by high degree of collaboration and communication among health professionals, what makes integrated healthcare unique is the sharing of information among the team members related to patient care and the establishment of a comprehensive treatment plan to address the biological and social needs of the patient. This is the integrative health where we can see the conventional medicine, we have the lifestyle medicine, we have the complementary alternative medicine and the self-care. The amalgamation of all is going to give us the integrative health. Integrative medicine is a holistic medical discipline which takes into account the lifestyle habits of a patient, the physician works, to treat the whole person rather than just the disease, the mind, body, and souls of a patient are taken into consideration to promote healing and well-being. 
as you all know that all systems have got something to offer and they are beneficial to i mean uh, uh, the human kind for helping the diseases but every system has got its limitations also now this is the i mean uh, basically you can say the compilation of total health system where we have biological medicine we have got an emotional therapy spiritual practices are there alternative medicines are there healing therapies uh, holistic therapies are there nutritional supplements are also required surgery invasive procedures are also required physical modalities are to be looked into mind and body medicine is again a very important part counseling is taking i mean uh, uh, it's a big uh, time requirement nowadays especially in the covid period people have been fed up there have been a lot of people uh, those who have been uh, constrained because of the lockdown so they have developed a lot of i mean uh, anxiety fear and depression so their uh, counseling i mean uh, is a very integral part then then we need a biofeedback then the stress management the consciousness awareness and energy methods they are all things which we have to look into and integrate to have the ultimate uh, holistic approach for the health for everyone need for integration of medical system as i said no medical system is complete in itself and all have certain limitations but the day the time when we are able to understand our limitations and keep ourselves open minded and giving a chance or giving a I mean a opportunity to some other I mean a mode of system of medicine to come and intervene for the betterment of uh, patients better treatment options for the patients many unwanted deaths can be avoided so far what is happening the patients those who have been I mean uh, admitted in the hospital for chronic diseases for Days, weeks, and months. Like as I was, I mean, taking, telling you about that case of a young boy of I mean, uh, GB syndrome, who was in the hospital, who was on uh, in a uh, ventilator. But despite of I mean, being there, he was not able to get out of it. So after intervening with homeopathic system of medicine, the ultimately you could see the results, and now he's absolutely hale and hearty and um, moving around. And uh, if we all understand the intricacy of other system of medicines i think we can save lot many patients from the misery of unnecessary medication or prolonged medication in one system of medicine better healthcare for the nation at large and economically viable viable healthcare these these are the need of i mean uh, integration of medical system and not looking for the domain where we have the best of results best of results can be seen in the long standing and non responsive chronic diseases and so called incurable diseases in modern medicine as we have been talking about in the uh, motor neuron disease and other things like avoidable surgical cases like my uh, most of the patients young children they have been uh, subjected to tonsillectomy at a very early age because of recurrent sore throat or recurrent I mean, infection whereas if those children are the patients treated from homeopathy point of view right from beginning for less number of patients would, i mean children would require the need of tonsillectomy or they have to undergo the uh, i mean uh, knife of a surgeon now again autoimmune disease is the one particular uh, section where we need to have the integration where i mean uh, those diseases are not so easy to be treated by any particular i mean uh, mode of system of medicine but if we couple up i mean uh, two system or three systems in case of need as per the need it could be i mean uh, very beneficial for the i mean patients even infectious disease where i mean uh, a short shot conventional medicine therapy has not been achieved like as in the recent uh, cases of pandemic of covid 19 that i mean uh, uh, sometimes they would say the antiviral drug the remdesivir is the only medicine for i mean this patient or then they started with talking about hcq then they talking about uh, giving medicine like uh, anti aids and all that so they were also i mean not knowing what is happening and what exactly is going to help 
So in those cases, when they were experimenting on their own, had they allowed the I mean other system medicine like homeopathy and Ayurveda, I'm sure far number of um, and less number would have gone to the kind of casualties and the deaths which have occurred, unfortunately. Though, I mean, uh, uh, off late, this thing has been taken uh, by the government of India that they have allowed, I mean, uh, to, uh, in few cases, to treat as an adjuvant therapy. The post-operative complications and management. Again, uh, this is the one domain where, I mean, the integration of medicine is going to be very, very helpful. There is a strong uh, research evidence that the integration of homeopathy into the medical practices can reduce the use of hazardous group of drugs. Not in one or two or many, I mean, as we've seen in number of cases where I mean, homeopathy has helped beautifully. Integration of homeopathy with conventional medicine at AKG OEMs, we have seen uh, many patients showing very good results in the cases of chronic kidney disease and undergoing dialysis. Patients having uh, altered blood pressure due to the I mean, dialysis, either high or low, and due to which the procedure had to be abandoned without completion. And after uh, introducing the homeopathic medicines in constitutional and SOS cases, Patients were able to go through dialysis successfully, and quite a good number of patients could reduce the frequency of dialysis also and maintain on homeopathic treatment in conjunction. Integration of homeopathy has been very, very beneficial in the cases of cancer patients where uh, they had been facing problems and complications due to the side effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Many patients were not able to tolerate these interventions due to the symptoms like headache, vertigo, vomiting, dizziness, and dullness. And after giving the homeopathic medicines, those patients could easily tolerate these therapies successfully. In such cases, the complement, complementary effect of homeopathy has been acknowledged by the patients in the com, uh, completing their conventional treatment and therapies. Though not claiming to cure the case cancer of the dose patient, but certainly homeopathy has helped them a great deal to go through and complete uh, their conventional or specialized course of treatment. As I told that AKG OVS, which was established in 1999, that Omele Institute of Homeopathy and Allied Medical Sciences uh, is an a pioneer in integration of medical system for the welfare of patients. And it was the year 99 that, I mean, if you could see that uh, the uh, very, I mean, um, uh, prestigious paper of uh, India, the Hindustan Times, had given that this for the very first time, invest the integrated medical services will be given under one roof. The services of experts of various systems will remain available round the clock at the Institute of OVM. This is in Hindi, that's the same thing. That, I mean, uh, there's been a new concept which has been uh, started by the AKG OVMs. And uh, these were the few, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, um, releases which came on the newspaper cuttings as well. The concept was appreciated, but since it was a private one, it was I was the first one to start with this and people had liked the idea, but when it came from the other practitioners, there had been some problems, uh, though uh, Dr. Arun Besha was there, who's the director of health services. After seeing, I mean, that uh, conjunction of treatment which we were trying to give, he was so impressed with that uh, concept. He introduced the same thing in all over Delhi, all over Delhi, all allopathic hospitals, they started homeopathic dispensing for the patients to come and have the homeopathic treatment also. What happened? Sorry.
as it says, uh, since no medical system is foolproof, we wanted to provide treatment combining two or more systems of medicine. And due to that concept only, we got our name in uh, Lipka Book of Records. Now, going for this uh, integration, there are a lot of challenges which are going to be there, which I have experienced in my I mean, uh, 22 years of practice with this integration. First of all, we need to have a like-mindedness of the physicians of other systems of medicine. Ego hassles and the partial and inadequate knowledge and biased opinion by few people causes difficulty in carrying on uh, the integration. And recently, of late, we've been seeing the unethical and biased advices from pathologists and radiologists, etc. Like you might have been seeing that the, I mean, we send our patient for investigation for some radiology uh, examinations like uh, ultrasound or CAT scan, CT scan or MRI. So after the record, I mean, uh, report, they advise review after three weeks course of antibiotics or such and such. So not this particular, I mean, uh, opinion of that radiologist makes uh, creates a doubt in the patient's mind, the one who was going under homeopathic treatment, he was improving also, feels that he has been advised by the radiologist to go in for antibiotics. So this is the practice which should not be there. Same is the case in the pathologist, like you see some cultures are there. So it has been reviewed after the course of antibiotics. Whereas, I mean, um, uh, from this forum of international, I would like to say that neither the pathologist nor the radiologist have any authority or any business to make this kind of a suggestion or opinions to the patient in their report. They're, they're supposed to be giving their findings in the form of I mean, radiological reports or in the form of pathological reports. What has to be done and what has not to be done is not their problem and sir? not domain. Uh, okay, Gupta ji, thank you, yes. sir. Because you know, another country, our Colombia is waiting. That's why. Okay, all right, all right. I'm just going to finish off. I mean, uh, actually, we spend, I mean, spend a lot of time. I mean, uh, because of technical problems. Uh, okay, no yeah, um, and yeah. there have been some some personal and monetary monetary issues of fear of losing patient of client is also something which is wrong. Now, what is the solution? It is the past. I can do things which you cannot do, and you can do things which I cannot, but together we can do great things. This is what Mother Teresa has been saying, and this is what is the need of the art, which I feel in the form of integration when we talk of the medical system, we all can help the humanity. With this, I would like to say thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, being uh, patient hearing and bearing with me the problems. Thank you very much. And over to Colombia, looking forward for other things too. Thank you so much, uh, Gupta ji and uh, Sanket Gupta ji. It's very good presentation, uh, very good uh, information also. Thank you so much because uh, our 